Welcome everyone to episode 72 of the Circle Back Podcast, the show where three great friends get together and just talk about video games. I'm Dan Lamarca. As always, I'm joined by Dan Dufernoy. How you doing, Shelby? I'm doing and all right. Shelby White. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Damn passing the buck right there, right? He stole that right from out from Monday. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> this is my routine. It keeps me sane. <laughs> Uh, um, That'd be so funny if Dan just started like, like well, I, I don't know what to say. It's, <laughs> it's already been said, <laughs> right? So it's over. <laughs> Cut. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for that, Dan. Appreciate it. I'm happy to help anytime I can. Um, today we have a couple games to talk about, and then some news hits. Um, the games similar to last week. Uh, the games. There's a lot of talk to talk about mm-hmm. with the games. I'm sure. Because we've all been playing Jedi, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Mm -hmm. And I know Dan got a lot further into Death Stranding, I'm led to believe. Yes. Um, And my week was, or my my two weeks was totally uh, not what I expected. Because after the last week's episode, or two weeks ago, the episode, I was like, all right, within the next couple weeks, I want to finish Death Stranding. I want to get through Jedi. And instead, I put 42 hours into Pokemon Sword. Wow. <laughs> I did not see that coming at all. Um, but there was something where I just like had the itch. I was like, I want to try it. I want to jump in. And I just like fell in love with it. Awesome. It's Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's just such a good, satisfying loop. And I didn't play um, Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. Mm-hmm. But man, being able to see a lot of the Pokemon on the overworld and How then specifically go for them totally changes the loop of this game. Yeah, I remember when I played Let's way. Go earlier in the year. Talking that about was a big it. thing yeah. for me. Yeah. I, I remember talking that. about yeah. it with you. But it's it it reinvents like what the loop of that game is because it doesn't feel like it never like grinding doesn't feel like grinding because you can seek right. specific Pokemon and be like, oh, yeah. I don't have that guy. I want to go. Or try I to get already him. have seven of them, so I'm going to go. That so way. I'm going to avoid yeah. them. Yeah. 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 And it, it sounds like such like a trivial thing, but instead of just walking in the grass and hoping for the best, you actually are like going after specific mm-hmm. ones. And they do such a cool thing of where like in the tall grass, you'll see multiples of the same type like running around, but on like the pathways, you'll see like one solo, like different Pokemon. So okay. it'll be like, oh, there's a Halucha or like some, some sort of like higher level like interesting pokemon just like chilling walking around and it's like you always know when you're like when they're in the main pathway that they're not as common as okay. like the ones that are in the grass do they have any like i remember one thing about let's go is you could find the same pokemon like multiples of it but it some had an aura about that like a blue yes or red. yes they, they do that, that now but it's just i think they're just they're just like shining gold and they that just means that they have a I think they have like a more powerful move okay. that they've learned that normally they learn in later levels, yeah. but they have it at this level or whatever. Like Pidgey comes with fly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or like, yeah, sure. Oh, that, that's, yeah. <laughs> but that's the idea is like they, they, they will show like, oh, this guy, there's something special about this one. So let's, let's go for that guy. Um, but yeah, I, so I beat the game. Oh my goodness. Beating the eight gyms and then the champion is like not that long Mm -hmm. if you just want to go for it. And then there's like a post game that I also beat that's like, it's all, it's also not that long, but you need to be pretty high level to do it. Okay. Uh, I caught my legendary, like I went through this game and just like, it was a whirlwind. Uh, I went with Grookey. Saw that coming. I think we talked about that, right? He's the, the grass type. Okay. Uh, the monkey, um, he his final evolution is called Rillaboom, which is amazing because when you throw him, it says "Go Rillaboom," <laughs> and it's like <laughs> it's like a, it's like you're chanting "Gorilla Boom, Gorilla Boom," <laughs> like it's like the stupidest thing. Um, the thing with this game is, so I don't play every single Pokemon game. I played X and Y. I played. Um, crystal sapphire gold red blue you know those but like that's why i'm saying like i kind of jumped to x and y Mm -hmm. and then i skipped the last one and then i went to this one no sun and moon for you yeah and it's not for any reason i just i'm not like super into that world so i'm not like oh every time one comes out i need to do it this game hit me like i like it much more like 
the way that the loop works is so satisfying for me where it's like I want to l- keep leveling up my guys and and they do shared experience throughout your party now instead so you don't have to like you know everyone used to do hey here's my level five guy I want to level up he starts the battle and then you switch him out right yeah. away so he gets part of the experience and it's like it's just silly to do that yeah. so like now they're just like okay everyone gets experience if they're in your party if they weren't in the battle they get less okay and depending on what level the enemy is depends on how much experience they get so if they're sitting you know (laughs) on your bench and they are level 10 and you fought a level 50 guy they're gonna get a ton of experience i believe they did that with let's go i I, yeah i believe so i don't know um but it wasn't battling remember it was just the throwing the right right right. so it wasn't a real battle you just got experience that's true Yeah. yeah yeah so i the other thing is they you get experience for catching the Pokemon. So even if you oh, even like more if your goal is like to catch them, like you never if you caught them you wouldn't get experience. Yeah. For it, it, as opposed to if you just fought them and, yeah. and, and they gotcha. fainted or whatever. So it's it's like encouraging you to catch them and you still get experience and a new Pokemon. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like there's no downside to catching them anymore. Um so if you're looking to level guys up, you can still go out and keep keep catching them. Um, the badge, the, you know, the gym battles are super easy. The like the game itself is just pretty easy. It's just so much fun to go through and like see all these different types and see the, like you know going into different areas. The, the big thing they added was the wild area, which is the where you have 3D camera control. It's like, you know, what everyone got excited about when they showed the demo where it looked like Breath of the Wild, you know. The truth is, what makes that cool is that there's no, it's not level gated. So, like, there are, it's one big open area. So, you can walk into So, if you go into an area and there's level 40 Pokemon right from the beginning, you can do that. And I think that's really interesting for this sort of thing because... Usually they're just broken up by the roots. Like, you know, route two is, you know, level 10 and then the next one's level 15 and whatever. What this does is when you do a gym battle, you get a badge. It ups the level of the Pokemon that you can catch in the wild. Okay. So it's like once you get the first badge, all right, now I can catch up to level 15 or something and then level 20 and then 25 and then 30. And so you're progressing through and then you're able to be like, Oh, now I can, I remember seeing that wild Snorlax. that was level 28. I could only catch 25. Now I'm going to go back and go for them. And because you can see them, you have a specific goal. in yeah. mind. Like I can't emphasize enough how like important that is to changing how this feels rather than it just being like monotonous, mm. you know? Well, that's a good RPG element of backtracking, you know, like, Oh, where you you remember a certain item or a certain oh, yeah. door or something like you that's, know like and yeah and and that's the crux of what makes this game cool is like you will see just random like you know a dragon type in the, in the wild in the wild area and be like I can't wait until I can go get yeah. this guy you know what <laughs> I mean like and then when you're ready it's like I'm gonna go back because I know where he is I know where he hangs out you know um, and what I'll say is the wild area is. I love it, but it's not what people expected. It it feel like the 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 fact that you have three D camera control, it it doesn't really matter. It's mm-hmm. not like you're really doing a lot of exploration. Like there are items you find, like you know you find a TM or like some something on the ground, whatever. But it's no different really than than a fixed camera. It's just to allow you to to walk around in in a three D space. Um, So I think that's a big reason why people were initially disappointed. But for me, it's the idea of the wild area where it's wide open and there are all these different level Pokemon and hanging around that I absolutely love. That sounds awesome, man. Um, Well, that that aspect is not new. That's just new to this franchise, you know? Correct. That's why it... But but people were upset leading up to it because they thought it was going to be like you're adventuring through this 3D space and, you know, going in different places. And, you know, that's not what this game is. And that's fine. It's not it's not trying to be that. Um, 
the other thing that's cool in the wild area is you can do the what they call so the big thing for this game is dynamaxing i don't know if you guys saw yeah the yeah they become the pokemon becomes gigantic and they be you know they like double their health bar and they do more damage and you know whatever so you do these dynamax raids with other people in the world so if you turn on internet connection you go to one of these dynamax raids you'll just see like the silhouette in the upper left of the pokemon and you're like, all right, I'm going to go fight this guy. And then random people will get thrown in with you. You get to pick which Pokemon you go in. And then you all battle it together. It's four on one. Okay. Um, that's pretty fun. Um, especially when you can do it with friends and whatever. Like, it's just an interesting addition uh, that I think is pretty cool. And that's for experience or what do you, what's, so what the, do you gain? The, the thing that's good about that is you gain a lot of items from those battles. Okay. So like when you come out of that battle, you'll get like experience candies that oh like you rare candy use. sort of stuff. Right, yeah. Right. So instead of just doing one level, it's a set number of experience. Cool. So you will get rare candies yeah. too. Well, but it could raise you one level or five depending on. So who that's the thing. To, a right? rare candy, if he's level one, he goes to level two. If he's ninety eight, he goes to ninety nine. Right. Yeah. So they're useful in their own right, but the exp candies have a set amount in them, so they're better for the lower level yeah, guys. That's you know what I mean? Quicker. So it's like Smart. Oh, the extra large experience candy has thirty thousand experience. I go from level five to like thirty. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's where that stuff is cool is you have a lot more routes to getting items to progress. Like everything's on a faster track, mm -hmm. you know, and it's fun because it's, it doesn't feel like they're forcing you to do all this grinding like, like past games have, you know? Um, so I've just been enjoying the hell out of it. Um, the thing that they do after the main story is really weird and interesting there, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like spoil the details, but Gary comes. There's through, a guy. <laughs> so there's two twin brothers, and I swear to you, this is true. One is named Swordward, and the other is named Shieldbert. Swordward and Shieldbert. And they have hairdos. One of them it looks like a giant sword, and one looks like a giant shield. And it is just the stupidest thing you could ever imagine. And I love it so much. Uh, it's. I was just laughing out loud when I got introduced to these guys. Shieldbert, it's my favorite. Shieldbert, That's, what a name. And Swordward. That's awesome. <laughs> so they. I mean, the, the game. It's just awesome. It's I've been having a great time with it. Um, the new Pokemon I like a lot. I, like I don't have a lot of complaints about it. Yeah. I, I've enjoyed my time with it. I'm I'm gonna keep just like going back to it. You know, with friends, whatever. Just playing here and there. But you know, I saw through both of the endings. Got through it. So now it's just kind of like, all right, who do I want to go look for? Try to catch who you know trade for for the shield specific Pokemon, whatever fill up that pokedex yeah so yeah it's just a really really good one of these and i highly recommend it awesome yeah yeah that is i was definitely excited for pokemon it. did you get it Joe? Sword. i didn't i haven't because it came out the same day as star wars so i didn't wind up yeah. just why are they doing this at this yeah. time of the year you know yeah. it's just like holy <laughs> and it's two moly. games so it's like uh, uh, yeah but yeah i i mean like i i would definitely recommend it if you're interested in that sort of thing yeah. um but yeah, that's Pokemon Sword. Cool. Uh, speaking, you just mentioned Star Wars. Let's dig into it. All right, right let's do um, it. Me and Shelby were talking a little before. Dan, how far in are you? So I'm probably, I've only explored, um, I'm in the third world. I did I did the intro part uh -huh. where you're- Bogano, the planet. Oh, so I did that part. I also, I, I was referring to the, the, the first part when you're jumping on the, on the you're at the freighters and the, oh, and the train stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So that world and the, then the uncharted, the world. prologue. Yes, exactly. The uncharted <laughs> yeah, right? part. That's exactly <laughs> what and was going through my head. I'm at the point where you can branch into the two worlds. So I've been going back and forth between uh, the two planets. I'm gonna forget their names. Yeah, but, Dothamir. Yeah, the Dothamir is the Zenfo. red Zenfo. red Zenfo. one. Yeah. So that's as far as I'm got. So probably only like four or five yeah. hours what do you think of it so far i love it so much yeah i'm having so much fun yeah. i yeah. I, and I love like you said you know it really does wear its heart on its sleeve you know where it's got the uncharted moments um and i understand the souls like moments where like you go to the you go to the save points and then all your enemies respawn and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that but um 
I'm just having a lot of fun with it. I'm liking all the exploring. The, I'm honestly just spending so much time just exploring the world, mm-hmm. taking up my lifesaver, fighting things. Same. And it's just, honestly, it's like such a joy to, it to, is. to play that it's game. It's great. You know, how far are you guys? I think I'm, Shelby's a I'm, little I'm probably bit the past furthest, me. just a l- tiny bit. But okay. me like and him are about the same. Two, yeah. I don't know if we should talk about specific planets. Yeah, we don't yeah. even mention the name of it. But oh, sorry, the, just that first planet is... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we can talk about Zepho and Dothmir because yeah. they're the first ones, but uh, we won't go any further than that. But me and Shelby have gone to the next planet okay. and then done a couple of other things. Um, the thing that I'll say, I love this game. I actually really love what they're doing with the story. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. getting better and better as it goes through. I think everything it does it does a little bit like like it's like a jack of all trades master of none kind of thing mm. so far for me That's where it's fair. like i love it as a whole but if you compare the combat to a souls or a sekiro it's not as tight it's not as precise mm-hmm. sometimes like if you if you miss your timing on one parry and then you hold block trying to block he like won't block he'll like get hit yeah, by a few hit. hits mm-hmm. and it it doesn't really make a lot of sense like it's just it's not tight in the way that you want those kind of games to be, but it's not demanding that either. Right. So it's not like it's it's a detriment. Like what I'm saying is I I am super happy with what it is. Like I'm not looking for it to change, but I don't want to like hype it up too much in the way that it's like a Souls game because, you know, the skill tree is very basic. Yeah, there's only... You honestly, always was- get the amount of skill... Like you have enough skill points to upgrade before you get... <laughs> Like I always have a full upgrade tree before more upgrades open. Yeah, you honestly, know, yeah. Like, I, I have skill points hanging out, and I'm like, I was super surprised by that yeah. too. It always seemed like usually, like you know, you have to be super tactical about how where you put your points. Okay, what well, do I really want this? What do I want this? It seems like here, I'm surprised by how many like skills I've already unlocked and how many more points yeah. I have. You the, know, it's the just, first two times because every time it's basically every time you get a new force power, mm. it opens the next tier of yeah. skills. Yeah, and. The first two times I had every single skill in the tree everywhere before I got that next thing. And it just seems weird. Like it's not. So for me, it's like I'm loving the hell out of it. Mm-hmm. I I specifically love the story. And it, it's a very fluid game. Like I like the way it moves. I like the way uh, everything flows around. I, like I said, I just don't think it's like that tight and precise as some of these other like you know it's almost like most people use the word polish to talk about graphical quality which the graphics in this game are incredible i love the way it looks it's been running beautifully on the pc i know it has some performance issues i've I've had some bugs they did just have a patch i think yeah okay yeah um but so for me this doesn't feel polished but i don't mean that graphically i mean it as a like weird little things don't feel quite exactly mm-hmm. right, you know? Like mm-hmm. some jumps feel weird and like or, or something feels like you need to be exactly at the edge in order to make a certain jump and it's like and there have been times where I'm like I get to a place and I'm like sh- am I supposed to be here yet <laughs> or am I supposed to have gotten <laughs> another power like I jumped a weird way and like glitched up almost and it's like the game just feels like it's lacking a little bit of polish but that's not to say that it's not a great game i i love love this game yeah i'm just having an absolute blast show what are your thoughts i what i wasn't expecting as much that they really have is like how much time you really spend on a planet yeah like when i went to the first type stuff yeah Yeah. like it's so in-depth and the map is unlike any other game which was nice that little 3d kind of or any game i've ever played that's metroid prime yeah, it's yeah. So metroid. It from, okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. it was like um so like going through that and i was just like all right i got this area and then i'm kind of like in my head like when am i gonna kind of circle back towards the beginning again like i keep unlocking <laughs> shortcuts but like i remember going to one of the first planets and i was there for like a couple hours yeah. just exploring 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 doing yeah. as much yeah, as yeah. i can and you obviously reach those moments like most games where you're like Okay, I can't go further. I yes. need something here, you mm-hmm. know. So let me go another way, and then another freaking like yeah. another hour of exploring. I'm I know. Like, yeah. Damn. I was it, like, but it this feels is, so good. It's uh, so that's what fun. I mean. Yeah. I love that, and I'm yeah. like, oh, wow. I was like, I love the fact that they didn't have to have 
or at least as far as I know, like you didn't jump planet to planet to planet where you can really just take your time and be on one for a long time. Yeah. And uh, see so many different. The, I really yeah. like the like you beat a new enemy and you scan it and yep. stuff like right. that. So and you, you, have, you immediately read <laughs> yep. about now it, like your reading everything, yeah. you know, yeah. like. The, the thing that I want to say based on what you were saying as like, oh, I love to explore every nook and cranny. Yeah. The only thing that I'll caution is like they, they tell you your percentage that you've explored the planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You revisit the planets. They're, they're mission locked. Yes. So don't try to 100% every planet because yeah. it's impossible. So it takes you like 50 and then yeah. you're just like, okay. Well, the yeah, thing is like, like you specifically go back and forth. But yeah. sometimes yeah. you don't real like for me, when I was doing the first planet like Zepho, I was like, oh, I want it. I looked at the percentage a lot and I was like, how am I missing all of this? Yeah. Like they're not clear initially that like, hey, we'll be back here and you'll get the rest <laughs> another right. yeah. because the areas are locked mm-hmm. specifically by mission. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. And if you look at that map, like it's pretty helpful in some places where it's just like, oh, I can get to this. I just need to just move. figure out how, yeah. you know, like the availability yeah. Yeah. the non-availability. But sometimes the red, you won't even. So the map doesn't. Yeah, some of open, the stuff you have no clue. The map doesn't open until you've been in that area, though. Yeah. So like certain areas are entirely locked off. Yeah. In, except for by missions. So not even mean, like hollowed or like blackened yeah. out or anything. Like just not on the you map. You won't even see yeah. it. Yeah. That's that's my only. Gri- so I would I would say to people that are have a penchant for exploring every nook and cranny, like do it. But then realize that if you're not finding a new route, you might be done with that planet yeah. for yeah. now. That's you know, because yep. me and Shelby have both gone and done our second Pretty mission on depth, Zepho, yeah. and it's it's like an entirely new <laughs> yeah. area. You know what I mean? It really is. You go back to the same planet and you don't see, you yeah. almost don't see anything really same. Oh, you know, see, like, that's exciting yeah. for me because that's honestly my favite part about the game is just like these landscapes. And oh, I just like amazing. it's just yeah. like it's super fleshed out. And like someone who's a Star Wars fan. And who's been recently complaining how it seems like Star Wars is just rehashing, you yeah. know, old things. Here's like new Star Wars in the world, but like it's different and unique enough. And yes. I just, I, I love just like, again, like you said, just going every nook and cranny that I can, just trying out, yeah. you know, different lightsaber techniques mm-hmm. and, you know, force powers. And- you know what I really, really love is that they, they, their story is so based on the prequels. Mm-hmm. But they actually are like doing interesting things with them. Yeah. And I think that's so interesting because you don't see that a lot. Most people are just afraid to touch the prequels. So they harken back to the old ones right. because they're like, we know everyone these loves good, these. Yeah. 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 But like they're doing a lot of things that are interesting. Yeah. And like a lot of the commentary because this is after three. Right. This is right when the yeah, Jedi's yeah. were being. The, a lot hunted. of the discussion is. And they talk about the Clone Wars all, all the time. time. Yeah, I, I think it's very, very cool as as a Star Wars fan to like get a nice, like, well told like story like that's really actually good. incorporating that kind of stuff. You know? I agree for sure. But yeah, it, the landscapes, the visuals. I mean, the way the way the things that they do in this game are just so so. Cool. My, just my favorite moments is just like you're just like walking, you're running, and like you know, in a field in general direction, and then just like out of the corner of your eye, there's like these huge yeah. like you know oh, man. ships or whatever. And you're yeah. Just like, Whoa, what's what am it's, I looking at? Like, that's cool, and that's to me what like yeah. the appeal of it yeah. is just you know, and it is that sort of uncharted feeling. Mm-hmm. Where it's just, you know, you're just this small P and then just yes. all these amazing things yeah. happening around you. They, they, like you said, their inspiration's on their sleeve. They, they have nothing to hide, and but they're doing it very well. So, yeah, so I love sure. it. I'm very happy with this game. Yeah. and Well, I mean, what I like that they took those aspects from those games, like the Souls, obviously, mm-hmm. is that you still have a lightsaber, but you can't just run up and hack and slash right. in this game, which is great. You right. know, like, cause you, you actually do, have to think about there it. There were a few bosses where I'm just like, ah, oh, getting there with a lightsaber. Oh, yeah, that huge ass alligator kicked. on the first yeah. planet. Who's you know, just, like, just ass kicked. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh man, you know, and you got to sit back and be like, all right, think about what this, am I going to do? You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think for me, I mean, you know, we haven't finished it yet. None of us have, but I, I think this is, this is one of the 10 best games of the year. In my opinion. I agree. Yeah, it's very good. Star Wars, Jedi, colon, Fallen Order. Yeah. It's so weird. It's very <laughs> weird. That that That's just priming up for sequels. That's all that is. Yeah. Star Wars, Jedi, New Order? Be the next one? Mm, maybe. You know? Every time I think of you, I get <laughs> shot right. You guys know just New Order? New, just New Order? Does nobody know New Order? Just Am I? New Order? <laughs> um, I love, oh, how much did you love the opening where he's just like, listen to that, yeah. Yeah. whatever music and stuff. Like, <laughs> and, they, yeah. and they pull it out. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Oh, I love this game. Um, yeah, it's awesome. All right. So, Shelby has played the opening couple hours of Death Stranding. Okay. Yes, just a couple. I think I'm in chapter two. 
Yeah, I believe. I, I think probably you, you probably did a similar thing to what I did where so I did it <laughs> Thursday night when it came out, but yeah. you did a similar thing of like there's a no, there's like a, a a logical stopping point <laughs> after a lot of cutscenes and and an opening mission yeah. that you probably got to and then just were like all oh, right, have, I'll come back. Have you guys played this game cuz I feel like all I've done is watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, Joe, there's a lot of That's playing. Fair. I'm not complaining. Oh no, there is a just, lot of playing, trust me. Um, so I had mentioned earlier, Pokemon Sword has mostly taken over a lot of what I was doing. I was able to play about an extra, you know, five, six hours of, of full in order, oh. not Death Stranding. Okay. I didn't even touch it since the last episode. Okay, gotcha. So I don't have much to add to it, but now that you have played I further, more. Yeah. I want to hear if chapter three is everything I cracked it up. To so be. I agree. I, I, uh, That's what Ralph was telling I me. I don't want to, <laughs> to too many story beats with Shelby. I do agree. Get through chapter two. Chapter two is such a slog. Yeah, if you listened to our last yeah. episode, I specifically told Dan, and I'm like, I'm telling everyone else, get like, do not do side quests in chapter two. Do not. Yeah, just go Get to it. chapter three as quick as you can. Do the main story Chapter stuff. Chapter 2 might still take you 10 hours. I don't like, remember exactly <laughs> my stopping point, but I've, I've enjoyed every moment so far. You know, oh, okay, like, good. Even though it, 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 just hitting all the cinematic notes and like that opening sequence and when you first start walking and like the music the comes music on, I'm like, up, this yeah. is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Uh, so for me, yeah. again, I, I have yeah. the same feelings as last time. Yeah. So I want to, I want, Dan, you could tell me what you've done. So, so my feelings honestly have gotten more to how you're like, I was, when we talked about it last time, I just got into chapter two. I did everything that you did. Um, you know, all the, the cut scenes and then I, you know, opened up the world a little bit more. So I was like, oh man, I could totally get behind this. And then playing more my feelings started to, oh, this is such a slog. But I know Dan said, just get through chapter two, just get through chapter two and go to chapter three. Mm -hmm. Chapter three does open things up. And you're right, the gameplay gets a little bit more interesting. There's more things that you can do. There's cool equipment that you can get. And it's definitely more fulfilling, the gameplay. But it also, again, like you said, the cinematics get worse and worse. And the story, mm -hmm. to me, gets more not good. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. I, it's so funny. Not good. A good description because it's it, you know so Hideo Kojima. The reason why I was so hyped for this game is is obviously I love the Metal Gear games like everybody else does because the story was zany, it was silly, it was weird, mm -hmm. and exactly like you said, Dan, I'm loving it for the gameplay concepts more than I'm actually loving for the story beats. To me, getting to each story beat, the payoff isn't worth it, mm -hmm. and I know that's really that's such a like a harsh thing to say, but. Truthfully, once Star Wars, once I picked up Star Wars, I just all right, Death Stranding. I'm done with you for yeah the week because yeah. I need to go just have right. some fun. And not that this isn't a fun game, but it's definitely questioning. And again, this is a good thing. I think it's a positive thing. This game is sort of questioning what I, what it, a video game is to me and what a video game means to me. And you know, when you look at video games as art. Video games are also still games, and what's the balance of it being some sort of, you know, painting on the wall that you can look at and compared to, okay, am I enjoying my time? Am I having fun playing this? Yeah, so there's a difference, between, but the only thing I'll push back on with that is there's a difference between uh, interactivity and uh, are you talking like fun level or interactivity because the painting, it's very interactive that's what i was going to say yeah. is the painting on the wall argument works for a game like virginia or mm -hmm. like certain games that like you're not really doing that much mechanically right. you're mostly just experiencing the story like even even you know we talk about until dawn or telltale games and mm -hmm. stuff it's like not a lot of game in there but it's still interactive and it's a game it's a video game and that's where that those lines get blurred yeah what you're really saying is like am i having fun is that what you're saying? I guess what I'm trying to say is 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 the payoff for what I'm doing is it is the payoff worth it? And I, I guess me as a narrative based sort of guy, right, doing all these things and I love the world that I don't not trying to spoil too much, but yeah, when you get to a point and you, know, you see these bridges being built and all these things and you get these new equipment and these new vehicles for transportation, it's awesome. But each time I get to a story beat it's just continually letting me down. So for me, the dichotomy is the story that you're having in the world is a good story. It's your person, but it's a personal. So if that story was at the heart of this game, right? 
it's a much better game. It's pushed, but it's that story is constantly being subverted by Hideo Kojima trying to overdirect the cutscenes themselves. That's the real discussion here because there's a great game inside of here. Actually, there's an amazing game inside of mm-hmm. here, and it might. I I haven't played much. I, I think I literally have played like one hour, and mm-hmm. it was it was an hour long cutscene, but like I. I am concerned based on things I've heard and I haven't read any spoilers, but just people talking about it, that the end of this game is much more cutscene heavy Mm -hmm. than the part that I love, which is chapter three, which is connecting everybody and... And I'm telling you right now, the emails, the way those emails are written. and the Oh, way yeah. It, Whoever wrote those emails, kudos. <laughs> yes. And it, it, it's just... A, it's. I really, really, really like this game a lot. Like, I like it a lot. And I, I, the more I see of what Kojima wants to be the A-plot, the less I like it. And I, I think there's going to... It would take a lot for me to like for for this game to go from a game that i really really like to souring me on it Mm -hmm. so i don't know if by the end i would be very surprised if i end up being like you know i don't think that was worth it because i really like this from what i played and i played 30 hours i know you have played a lot more than i have and i do and i like it but i do the fact that i myself was i got to a point where i was just like all right, I want to go play Star Wars. I'm going to really, really enjoy this. And I haven't picked up Death Stranding since. Not that I'm not going to play any more of it. But I am finding, me personally, and in, in my preferences, my frustrations of feeling like, like you said, there is something there, which is why I keep going back. I love the moments where you're traversing the landscape and this amazing music is playing. And it feels, it feels like you're on an individual journey. And yes. I think that's really, really powerful and really, really inspiring. Um, but yeah, and then you get these sort of cutscenes and these story beats that just completely take you out of it, take you out of that that feeling. Yeah. And I think that's where I get kind of lost, and I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna go do something else. And I think that's why, you know, for me to want to turn off the game, I can only imagine how many other people probably gave up on this game. Oh yeah, you know, five course. hours in. Yeah, I I just really really like I I think of journey Mm -hmm. and like because a lot of times we talk and and you always are talking about how what you want from a game is like a great engrossing narrative right but but journey and this is my point journey is a great story and there's not a lot of cutscene and dialogue Mm -hmm. there's there's no dialogue but my point is you can tell a great story without all that so so it's a little it's it's a little disingenuous sometimes to say, hey, the story in this sucks. Yeah. Because you're not including the story Fair. that that's going on while you're playing the game. Fair. What you're really saying is like, I do not like the directed cutscenes. I think the dialogue is bad because it's really bad. Uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of like real true uh, arguments to be had there. But I think overall, if you're talking about the story of the game, I think there's a lot to love about the story of this game. So it's it, it's tough for me because I, I get like a – sometimes I get a little like defensive of this type of thing because I'm like, there is a great story in yeah. this. And, and, and he set up a great world and, and the story that I have going through these different areas and the things I'm experiencing when I'm finally finding, you know – when I can, be, I'm almost about to die, and I and somebody built this thing right here, and it gets me to where I need to go oh, at the sure. last second. Yeah. Like, it's incredible, and and the the thing that they set up, it just works, and it's great, and I love it, and I just wish that he could control himself, and not be so over the top and overwrought and beat you over the head with everything mm-hmm. he wants to say, because it's just bad when that happens, and it's just frustrating. Because I like, there is a game in here that I love more than anything. Like I think it is the coolest idea. It's so isolating. The 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 way everything, like that's the core story. Is like your isolation 
while being surrounded by things that other people have done. Oh, yeah. Is like just so well done and great. But when it's constantly even interrupted in that world with constant, you know, intercom beeps from, uh, you know, uh, Die Hard Man and stuff like that. Like, I think that just really takes me out of it. I would love I would love a 50 hour game of just that sort of play style, that atmospheric music. I'm in. But yeah. I feel like it's constantly take he constantly takes me out of it every time you know die hard man shows yeah. up you know, you know sam uh, yeah. sam uh, and yeah. then cutscene 30 minutes and then go back to it and it's just it, it really it really honestly for me I mean, this is just my personal opinion it's it it, it takes me out of it it takes me out of what right. it it's, it takes me out of the magic of it and yeah. it, it kind of slows it down for me where it gets it's understandable yeah you know I shelby you. what's your I, listen <laughs> I've, I've played the very least amount of it so it's like to to hear all that like whatever i'm still in i i always give praise to games that go out and like build this world like you were saying build a world mm-hmm. where i'm like all right i want to know i mean like yeah. what yeah like what is it you created something for me to learn about and yeah. i want to know everything about it yeah. you know so like Again, I'm super early. I said game, it. But I said it on I the last episode. I want to know everything about it. I said it on the last episode. Kojima is a m- amazing world builder. He's a great ideas guy. Yeah. And he's a terrible writer. Terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. But there's a place for somebody like that if he just would be part of a team instead of being all about him all the time. Because yeah. that's what he is. That's how he talks. That's how everything works is like... I did this. I started from nothing. I did this and that. And it shows because all he wants to do is is tell you that this is a Hideo Kojima game. Just like, you know, it, it frustrates me because it's like you, you are good at what you do. But just do what you do yeah. and let somebody else help you. Like, that's really what you need. It reminds me of like a filmmaker that puts like, it's you know, like your very first student film, and at the end credits, it just goes directed by me, directed yeah. edited by starring, me, yeah. starting produced me. by me. Exactly, yeah. you know, like that's what it reminds me. And the with. funny thing is, <laughs> his studio has a bunch of people in it. Yeah. It's not just him. Yeah. But if you read the credits, you would think he made it by himself. Yeah. And and that's the that shines through into the game. You know what I'm saying? This is not just me criticizing him as a person and a creator and an auteur or whatever. It. It bleeds into the game yeah. all over the place. No, this isn't your opinion. This is, but it's, it's the it's, self-indulgence <laughs> in the cutscenes that makes this so evident. And, and it, it reminds me. I've brought it up multiple times. We talk about Brothers, a game that Joseph Forrest made, right? And then with no dialogue, no cutscenes, whatever. Beautiful game. Everyone was like, "Wow, this person! What a great story!" You know? Yeah. Then he comes out and makes uh, a, way a way out and writes a bunch of dialogue and a bunch of characters. And it's terrible <laughs> because he didn't take the right lessons right from his game. from his game. And this is Kojima's entire career arc is he's not taking the right lessons. That's how you get Metal Gear Solid 4, which I love for how dumb it is. But you get Metal Gear Solid 4 because you're fundamentally misunderstanding what people love. People about the love. Original three. Yeah. And the problem is what people what people a lot of people's criticism is about this game is wow, the gameplay is boring. I wish I could just experience the 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 Kojima story that I that I want to know. And he's hearing that plenty. So next, and the next I'm just game make is a movie. gonna be even worse. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> it just it's frustrating to me because I have loved Metal Gear Solid forever and I really, really like this game a lot and and you you see that it, it's it's there. The I'm part, still the waiting parts for, are there. Uh, I'm waiting for Snake to pop out one of the boxes I'm holding. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> just an exclamation point <laughs> pops <laughs> over. <laughs> now I Death Stranding very complicated feelings on it. I I said last episode like this is one of those games that I could not imagine my personal top 10 not having this game on it. Like, I like it that much. And then... Th- but then there's going to be... all these cutscenes yeah. are coming, and it's, it's like... It's so funny, because, yeah, I felt that same way. I but And then I played Star Wars, and then I was like, oh, this is what I really like. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like... This is doing something that a lot of other games don't do, where it's very slow and methodical and like 
which I'm fine with. I've watched every Tarkovsky movie 85 times. I like I totally yeah, but, I I enjoy the immersion. Yeah, but, but then you take constantly take me out of the immersion with your nonsense. But that doesn't take me. So so what I'm saying, my whole thing is the 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 things that that you don't like about it don't take me out of the immersion because the world that was built there is built around this weird social network system. Mm-hmm. So I'm okay with the constant but you know whatever and and people calling you I've, all the sound effects are tremendous in this game oh, by yeah. the way. but it's just like that kind of shit it it reminds you that of what the central theme is of of being isolated in a world where everyone's connected like mm-hmm. that's a whole that's the idea right and it works when you're doing that and i appreciate that the thing that i cannot get behind and i and i've said it a million times already is in the actual cutscenes, the dialogue between characters and the uh, the the bludgeoning of themes over your head, like that stuff is egregious, and it, it's like you cannot you cannot defend that. It's indefensible, really, because he's trying to do something that he's not capable of doing. And that's where I come down on it, and and I'm so harsh on it because it's like, you have you have your main idea, and it works really well with your game. It works great, like it really does. Your the world you built, that opening two hours, even though it was a long cutscene, set up awesome. Like you know, works great. Now just let the game be the game, mm-hmm. and and then we would have like a a, a classic here. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like just let the game be the game. Uh, instead of trying to over explain and shoehorn in these you know shitty ideas like it's just it's not panning out the way you want it to and and that's why i'm so curious if first of all i don't really know how much time i have left i my clock says like 32 hours or something i i don't know if i have 15 or 20 or 30 or whatever but yeah, they said this is like a 50-hour game. Or yeah, like but that, who right? knows what that means. I, yeah. I don't know how much I'm doing compared to other people yeah. or how fast I'm completing these or whatever. But I, I, you know, I need to see the end. And, and I'm very curious, um, based on what I've seen so far, if my opinion of the game is, is going to continue to decline the more cutscenes there are. Yeah, I'm curious. How, I'm really curious how time is going to look at this game. You know what I mean? Like... That's honestly that's where I'm looking at it. It's just like I wonder, you know, th- next time we do our decade list ten years down the road, right? Yeah. You know, I'm curious how how it's going. We're going to are we going to revere it? Are we going to say, wow, you know what? Maybe we didn't understand it then, but Ahead it was of such its a time. yeah, it was a landmark, or, or I don't know. It, it, we always tend to look back on things with rose tinted glasses. So mm. uh, I think the people that appreciated it for the good things it's doing maybe me is as, as one of those people will forget the the bullshit the crap you know yeah and a lot of times that's how that works i mean you never know because yeah uh, but that does happen we'll when, you can go back and play an old game sometimes and you're like ah forgot about this part yes <laughs> that's how that's how I felt yeah, about that red happens Re- a lot that's how i felt about red dead redemption the first one the first yeah. is like one replaying is... it i i when that game oh my gosh when that game came out that was my i was like this i've never played a game like this is the greatest thing i've ever blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. and then when the second one was coming out uh me and a buddy we were like all right let's revisit you know the the original one because the new one's coming out let's you know this oh this game's gonna be just as good as we remember it and we played it and we were like man there's a lot here we don't like like yeah. and it's <laughs> it's it's really you know Mm-hmm. I think when we our first episode, mm-hmm. I put Red Dead Redemption as my favorite, like one of my top ten favorite video games ever. Yeah. And man, not anymore. It's like <laughs> replaying it. I'm just like, man, I forgot about all this Down nonsense. Down in the list. So. You, f- you forget how Rockstar it is. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Yeah. What was that? You forget how much of a Rockstar game it is. Yeah, Rockstar's shitty. <laughs> I mean, they... Rockstar, stop making these games that are so well <laughs> like purchased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not going to stop. <laughs> um, all right, so that's Death Stranding. I think we talked enough about that for now. Um, I'm sure these same arguments will, will be had come game of the year time. Yeah, I'm sure. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll certainly have it beaten by then. I can promise you that. Uh, last game on the list, we have Luigi's Mansion 3. Yeah, Shelby. it's awesome. Have you guys Shelby. played it all? No, no I haven't played no? any of oh, it. It's great. It's absolutely fantastic. And um, it's, oh man, I don't, it's one of my favorite Switch games, I think, so far. Really? Period. Um, That's it, great. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
um, obviously a Switch exclusive mm-hmm. um, so far, but playing it is it reminds me of the old, the first one. You know, yeah. like I recently played through the second one, but obviously that was more handheld on the uh, DS. But playing through the first one for the first time, this takes me right back into it. Mm-hmm. And what I love most about it is that it's you're in this hotel. And every floor is a totally different thing, you know, like it it really, it's like you have your, the movie floor, this, I just recently completed a castle floor that I think they did, like that was part of the demo or something. Mm -hmm. So, but every floor has something different to it. Tons of different ghosts. The, the shtick of the game is every big ghost that you defeat, you go into an elevator and all the buttons are missing. So every big ghost you defeat, (laughs) you get a button. Yeah, Yeah. 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 But you go down into the basement, you start down there and, um, talk to uh professor egad and stuff and then you you get your poltergust the same way you do in every other game it's Mm -hmm. in his trunk (laughs) his his cars just randomly park somewhere you go into the trunk you get the poltergust (laughs) um what i like about this is every floor there's a little bit more to just explore it's not just defeating ghosts all right go to this room defeat the ghost go to this room defeat the ghost there's like eight crystals you can get on every single floor so you can really like go throughout and explore the crap out of this um, I, <laughs> I love the silliness of these games. Always the, the very opening cutscene. you go in and you're invited to the hotel by some mysterious guest and you go in and all the, um, the hotel workers, like the, uh, the bellboy and mm-hmm. the guy behind the desk are clearly ghosts wearing masks with like smiling <laughs> faces on it. And you're just like talking to them and they're just like, Oh, why don't you go to your room? <laughs> you know, like it's just, that's great. It's just funny. Awesome. Um, but big, like that opening room, you, you wind up coming back to it that, and it's like the tall ceilings and mm-hmm. like a lot of stuff to do in there. Um, the new elements that they added are fun. It makes the, like when you hit an enemy, say that your common enemy was like 10 in the original games, yeah. it'll be like 100. But it doesn't take more time to beat them because mm-hmm. you get this slam power-up that like yeah. accelerates the... You like you shine the light on them as always. You start sucking and then on you the like uh, vacuum. And, and then the yeah, ground. once your like little power builds up, you hit A and you try and hit it as many times as you can before it, the power goes back out okay. on it and, um, and you bring them in, stuff like that. But... They usually, what I've seen is they've added a a lot more ghosts that kind of disrupt that for you. Same kind of types and stuff like that, except all the bosses are totally different. All the bosses have like, like obviously you have your chefs uh, in a Mm -hmm. kitchen level. Like Mm -hmm. I said, that castle level I just did, the knight had like his own sort of thing that was Mm -hmm. really cool. I think my favorite new power up thing though is the suction cup that you can shoot out because it adds a lot more... um, thinking to it like sometimes you just go to a ghost and you're like how do i get this guy and you're like duh let me shoot this at him take something off him a lot of them have shields and stuff armor and whatever yeah Yeah. so you're like you shoot this suction cup out but you got to aim it and uh and guiji is fun guiji's fun to do you know what i've heard so i think this is i I, i've been wanting to play this game but i've heard that the co-op is really really good in this game because one person plays as guiji the whole time so when you get to the puzzles where it's like you and Guiji, you have to you work together and you it, both yeah. do part of it and whatever. I, I heard it's great. Yeah. So no. I, I've been wanting to actually play this with Diana. Yeah. And see without if, like, a, yeah. like, I mean, it's not really spoilers, It's, but without saying anything, it's a fantastic game. I think all the stuff that I said, they've shown you in the demos and stuff. So, yeah. And I'm, I'm, You've I been loving it? think I'm about maybe almost halfway through, wow. but I've been loving awesome. it so far. That's great. Yeah. But I haven't like touched a lot of fun. it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. what it is. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. And again, it takes me right back to that first time I played Luigi's Mansion, but better. My yeah. opinion. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. really cool, man. So that's no, Luigi's like Mansion 3. I'm glad you've been enjoying that show. Yeah. And let's just do, I have a couple of news items here um, because that's about it for what we've been playing. Um, Half-Life Alex. Did you guys see this? Yeah, the VR game. New Half-Life game coming out. Wait, what? Val- Half-Life 3? Dan hasn't heard about this. Wait, apparently. is Half-Life 3 coming out? It's not Half-Life 3. It's oh. Half-Life Alex. Oh, yeah. yes. The Half-Life 2.5. Right? No, with Alex. Gal. The woman. Alex. A-L-Y-X. Oh, okay. One of the main characters. Oh, I thought it was. It's all right. Uh, you play as her in this, um, and it looks pretty interesting. So it's it's made by Valve. Mm-hmm. It's a Valve Half Life game, coming exclusively to VR. Oculus, and though, right? Is it an Oculus game, or is it coming all around? 
it's just yeah it, it's just on steam uh, right, absolutely right, right. yeah this is a valve game so uh, you know just oculus yeah you know whatever or whatever one you play with. yeah they yeah i think it's the oculus quest is the one that has okay. the the no wire it's yeah, wireless one, of, one yeah. of them's wireless so they're doing a thing where if you buy that you get this game for free cool um but i mean you got an extra thousand to, to blow on an oculus yeah right. <laughs> um oh but, yeah but anyway half-life alex uh, watch the trailer if you haven't seen it um it looks interesting. It it looks like a Half Life game. There's a G Man at the end. G Man, that's who I was thinking of. Because I no, because I saw I saw the pictures of G Man. No, no, no. I know you don't play as him, but I saw the pictures of G Man. No, I know, I know. I just think it's funny. Like, oh, the guy. <laughs> yeah, the weird guy in the suit who's just like, you know, yeah. what are you doing here? Like that's yeah. like he. So basically, the only so the thing that I'll say about this game is it looks like a vr game in the way that like what is it doing to make it a half-life game mm. like it, it might if they put out a vr shooter that has a great story that's great but half-life games are revolutionary that's what they're built on you know the first the first one with the physics and then the, the, the storytelling in the second like this is the point right so what are they I, I'm very curious to see what they're and doing. And there's got to be a reason they're bringing it to VR, though. Like they. Oh well, oh, yeah, you know, something like, weird might happen. Well, uh, yeah, because if you would have released it on consoles, people would be like. I I also just know. feel that if they, if they wanted to make a VR game, they made a VR game. Like that's why. Like you know, they're not building it as a first person shooter, and then hey, it can also be VR. Yeah, but it might be one of yeah. those things like you know, you die in the game, you die in real life. You know? Oh, that's revolutionary. That that would be revolutionary. You know, I've never seen yeah. anything like that. That's like uh, Ray Bradbury. Right <laughs> that's like uh, The Matrix. Yeah. That's yeah. like how uh, Hideo Kojima wanted to make a game that uh, if you died in the game, your disc would burn and, and it, it would what no dick. longer work. <laughs> As, absolute jerk he is. <laughs> yeah. So I just think that's hilarious. <laughs> Take it to the next step. <laughs> Um, but no, I mean, half like half life, Alex. If you watch the trailer, it looks like they're doing some interesting things. I I am just skeptical as to why they. So if you have a story to tell in that world, that's great. Tell the story. I'm I'm not saying anything like that, but it's interesting that they said, "Hey, let's make a new Half Life game exclusively for VR." Like, what are they gonna do? I don't know. I need to know. We're gonna have to. Yeah, there's gotta be something. We're gonna have to play it. We're gonna have to find out. But anyway, just know, wanted to bring is, that one up. That's coming out in March. Killing me too, because I have the the PSVR. Uh -huh. Like originally when I was oh. buying it too, I was like, oh, I want to look into Oculus because I knew that like Stormlands was coming out, and that yeah. was something by Insomniac yeah, I but wanted you to need play. A, you need a PC like this. If you're exactly. Go I don't yeah. have a PC. Plus, I wanted to play Astrobot. So Astrobot's <laughs> so good. <though. laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. Next is Google Stadia. It launched. Yeah. Feelings. It's. I think we said it all. It's it launched. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, the thing that people <laughs> keep saying in reviews and discussions and anything, I, I've looked it up, I've read a lot. It sounds like, hey, it's impressive that it works. Mm -hmm. the, wha who, who needs this right now? <laughs> That's the real question because... These are all older games. They don't run as well right. as they would on other things. The use case is, and I know the type of person that says, I have one game that I want to play, but I'm not going to buy a $400 console for it. Yeah. You know what? You might buy a Chromecast for $40. To play this game. To play this game. Yeah. The problem with that is... You, right now at launch most of the features aren't working like the the you need to have the stadia controller you need to be plugged in like a lot of the shit that they promised you is have, in here at launch gotcha so this is basic the problem that i have with stadia right now is that they're using this as almost like a beta launch yeah it's like a physical beta yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so i just feel bad for the people that are like getting in day one because really what it sounds like is, hey, 
next year they might have a lot of this figured out and everything will just work and yeah. and it could be cool if you want to do if you want to play your games that way i don't think this really applies to us really I mean, I'm not. like we have consoles i have a pc like yeah i, I don't think it's for us so i don't want to poo poo it too much because yeah. it's like it's not really for me so i shouldn't just be like hey this doesn't seem good yeah um i think it's an interesting idea and i mean everyone's doing it you know Microsoft is is talking all about streaming games on Scarlet. So like, I mean, they've kind of the with the what was it the old digital Xbox? You know, like they're trying to get yeah, it to that full. But now they're really trying to do what Stadia is doing. Yeah. Of like, hey, you're not gonna have to download anything. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna have to do anything. The game just streams to you and play. You know, so so it's it's cool. I'm still interested in it, but man, that is some way to launch. I'll tell you that. Not great. Um, next, I have uh, two quick things from uh, XO19. Speaking of Microsoft, they have an event every year where they just kind of do like a little showcase type of thing. Um, they, they had Don't Nod there because their next game, Tell Me Why. Ooh. It was announced, and I think it'll be a Game Pass cool. game. That's why they had it on there. Um, and that, the big thing, the big takeaway from that is that it will feature a transgender male main character. Now, the interesting thing here is Don't Nod has experience doing these sort of things. Mm -hmm. um, but... They had an interview with Patrick Klebic at Waypoint asking like, you know, okay, you want to do a transgender lead. What are you doing about it? Do you have anyone on the staff that's transgender? Do you have anything? And they were like, well, no. We but, just really like RuPaul's uh, Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting to be like, hmm, why not? <laughs> like, I understand you want, you're, they say, oh, we're doing our research. We have consultants that are transgender, whatever. It's right. like, Maybe you should have the people that know actually have, have experience. life experience yeah. doing this when you're obviously going to center on this person's life. Right. And, you think it becomes life experiences. exploitative after a after I think a point. it inherently is exploitative yeah. in in the fact that they're not you want to be inclusive in your story, right, but, but there's not nobody in your working studio. on it. Yeah. Right. So I'm not I'm not like uh I don't think this is a, a bad faith thing by them. Mm -hmm. I think they mean well. I just am suspicious of their the motivation. Mm, more their capabilities, you know, <laughs> as they are now. Um so I just wanted to mention that. Uh the other thing that I took out of XO nineteen, there were a bunch of announcements there, but these these were the two that I personally care about the most. There's a new Rare IP announced. It's called Everwild. Uh, they showed a brief trailer, no gameplay. It was just a little cinematic. Hmm. Um, people are suspecting that it might be more of a, a Sea of Thieves type multiplayer thing, mm -hmm. but fantasy and... I mean, the visuals look great uh, if you watch the trailer, um, but it just seemed like there were like three or four... Uh, adventurers looking and found this you know crazy deer looking animal yeah. and it it, it like, seems like they're doing a fantasy sea of thieves kind of thing which for the people that like that kind of thing that's great i was not too pleased with sea of thieves myself i um, think it topped off our most disappointing games <laughs> last yeah, I year. Think so. <laughs> pretty disappointing game because <laughs> fucking rare is such a good developer <laughs> yeah. and they appear to be continuing uh what they want to do now yeah, which trend. is apparently the the multiplayer games like that so we'll see maybe maybe i'm off base with that assumption but uh next i have there's a lot of rumors a lot of talk that resident evil 3 remake is already almost done and it's coming out in 2020 that's that. exciting yeah so you know who knows how true these are these are true rumors um but there are a lot of news sites writing them up true rumors <laughs> <laughs> they, what i mean by ah, that, those are my favorite type a, of rumor <laughs> it's mean, a well believed <laughs> fact rumor it's a rumor in the in the definition of a rumor is what i mean like it's truly a rumor <laughs> okay 
Um, gotcha. Truly, truly scrumptious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they say uh, Resident Evil 3 remake already being made, almost done, coming out 2020. So that'd be Ooh. pretty cool because Resident Evil 2 sure is a good game. Oh, I heard there's some so good Black good. Friday deals on Resident Evil 2 right now. Mm. Really? If you haven't bought that game, yeah. check them out. Uh, and then the last thing I have here... There is a giant Dota 2 patch, and it's, it's. I wanted to mention it because, I mean, I've played a thousand hours of Dota 2 in my life. I know a lot about this game, but they totally are revamping it right now. Uh, it's called the Outlanders Update, and I'm just going to go through a list. I'm on Kotaku. They have kind of a bullet point of the big changes, and this is only going to apply to people that care about Dota. Everyone else is just... Uh, Hang tight. I'm going to take a little nap <laughs> uh, for a second. Every player now starts with their own courier instead of the entire team sharing one. Huge change because you would have one courier run from your home base where the shop is, bring out your items. It's like slow flying, you know, drops your items off to you, then goes back, picks up the other person's items, goes back. And you would like fight with your team about, hey, who called the courier? I had my <laughs> items on there. Um, so now everyone gets their own courier. Uh, couriers can also place wards um, once you reach level 15, which, again, very specific thing, which is what this list is. And you guys certainly don't know what that means. <laughs> place it like a young ward? <laughs> like, a, like a battle assistant? <laughs> wards give you vision of the map in the fog of war area where you can't see. Cool. So if you don't have a tower, you can't see that area of the map. But if you place a ward, it gives you an area of vision. So instead of you dangerously having to cross the river and go into enemy territory to place a ward, yeah. now you can send the courier in to place the ward for you once you're level 15. That's pretty cool. Interesting. Also, speaking of wards, they're now free instead of 110 gold. Nice. So big change there. Nice. Freeze for me. Uh, also, you start the game with three town portal scrolls. So they normally cost money. You start out with a few of them. They're basically, they're doing things to kind of make it a little easier and less complex, which is, I think, a good thing um, because that game is so obtuse and <laughs> absurd. Uh, heroes also go, instead of level 25 being the cap, they go up to 30. And when you get to 30, you get the entire talent tree unlocked, which is pretty cool. Um, there are no more side shops, the secret shops. Or not secret shops, the side shops on uh, the long lane of each side. They're gone and replaced with outposts, which provide bonus XP and gold and can be teleported to just like a tower, which is pretty neat. Uh, neutral creeps now drop items instead of just providing you with experience and gold. Um, so there are 62 items on the list that, that the neutral creeps can drop, which... Is pretty insane. Um, and then the, the last couple things they have here is that there are a bunch of existing items and heroes that are reworked. Um, and th they added two new characters with this drop too. So that brings the grand total to, I think, 120 something. Cool. Um, so it's a pretty huge update for Dota 2, and I am definitely going to jump in and just check it out, and just, just see what it's all about. Sounds once. like it's the perfect Christmas gift to uh, the Dota 2 players. Yeah, so that should be nice. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the last news that I have on here. Uh, you guys have anything to add, or you think we're good? I saw, and I don't think this really comes as any surprise, but they're already pretty well into working on the second part of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Okay. I know they were talking about, like, I guess they're not waiting, like they're anticipating people just wanting, wanting, wanting more, part. you know, like, um, so I know they said, they came out and openly said that they're pretty far into already making that. Did they say how many parts there were going to be? Three parts to the whole No thing? clue. Never played the original, so I don't know how uh, big the game is. I, I think they haven't said, because they yeah. think it might be more than two. Because so, I know, like, they didn't say it, the I first think. game is the first of the remake is just going to be the Midgar part, which was just ten hours of the original yeah. game. So it's be like a sixty-hour game just in Midgar. Yeah, which was the best part of the game. Anyway, you know what so. this reminds me of? The Hobbit being a trilogy. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's exactly it. Yeah. A little too much, friends. Yeah, that's not, not a good thing. Not great. <laughs> a little too much. It's not a good thing. <laughs> not great. I haven't um, played this game, but I've read The Hobbit. <laughs> a little too much. <laughs> 
Sounds uh, like they're just going to be making up a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just fill it up. Just adding enemies that were never in the book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see about Final <laughs> Fantasy VII. I mean, I'm I'm very curious to get my hands on that game in March. Yeah, March, I think, comes out. Or April? No, well, one of the two. Last next year? April. Every <laughs> game next year comes out in March or April. So. <laughs> That's it. Uh, especially now that Last e- of Us Even the ones that were supposed to come out yeah. in February. <laughs> um, but yeah, all right. That's going to do it for the episode. Um, thank you, Dan, for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Shelby, for being here. Thank you very much. And thank you all out there for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll catch you on the next one. Until then, peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching and or listening. Just here to remind you that you can find us by searching for Circle Back Podcasts or Circle Back Gaming on any of these podcast services. Anchor, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, or Stitcher. My God, I'm out of breath because of all these podcast services. But you can find us anywhere there. Also, you can find us our video version on YouTube by searching Circle Back Podcasts or Circle Back Gaming uh, and the rest of the videos we do. Thanks, guys.